Hey, it's Joseph here. Today's video is about VR. The VR technology has been useful for the architectural process and it allows you to not only view the project but also be inside and be walking around it. You and your colleagues can use VR as a design review tool but also present your work to your client inside of the VR so that they can actually walk inside of the designs that you have been working in. Since my first encounter with VR in 2016, the technology has improved massively over the course of five years. Both the software and the hardware that we use for VR has been improving altogether. So whilst I have done a couple of VR related content on this channel before, I wanted to recap my setup and actually guide you from the very start to actually the end result of doing VR presentations. So in order to get VR implemented into your workflow, first we are obviously going to need some sort of VR headset. There's a lot of different kinds of VR headsets that are available. The keyword that you are going to be looking for is the room scale experience where it allows you to move around the room and actually register your physical movement inside of your VR headset. So you're gonna have to find headsets that are compatible to do room scale VR. A couple of names out there are Oculus Rift and HTC Vive and Windows Mixed Reality headsets. And although it is not officially supported by Enscape, you can still use Valve Index or Oculus Quest. They are typically compatible with wide variety of VR solutions. And as I have mentioned, my personal choice for the VR headset is going to be Oculus Quest. I have recommended this headset many times inside of my videos. And there is a later generation of Oculus Quest, which is Oculus Quest 2, which overall experience will be pretty Pretty much the same except the fact that it's going to be in white color as opposed to dark gray and black finish as you see here so you can apply the same method to this but overall i find oculus quest to be the most mobile and versatile type of headsets that are available because you can do completely independent vr experience as well as the room scale vr experience that we are looking for today the next piece of puzzle that we are going to need is a hosting software or vr software it also comes in different types and and sizes but I have been favoring to use Enscape for my main VR solution which allows me to continue working inside of the model yet if I just connect the VR headset I can immediately dive into the VR experience which is a huge plus as you don't really have to convert your file and it is going to work with SketchUp, Revit, Rhino, Archicad and Vectorworks as well and lastly you're gonna need a good performing machine which should have dedicated graphics card so that it can push high fidelity graphics off of your machine onto the headset but the degree of graphics card is going to vary depending on the complexity of your project and amount of materials that you want to load into the file but if you want to ensure that your machine is going to perform whatever the condition of the project may be and actually be able to present your work at clients office rather than your own office setup then you're going to need MSI's mobile workstation such as the machine right here and MSI is the sponsor for this video. MSI mobile workstations are made to perform complex tasks in a wide range of professions and disciplines. It delivers best in class quality and reliability creating the ultimate premium performance. The architecture, engineering and construction AEC industry require performance and MSI mobile workstation can provide that. And it allows you to stay agile as you can take the machine on the go. These laptops are certified by different software vendors such as Autodesk, Enscape, Graphisoft and more. They will offer optimized performance when producing 3D models and complex renderings. And don't forget, it will be the right answer for VR experience as well. So I'll be using this WS66 for the rest of the video so I can showcase to you how this machine is going to perform with the VR tasks. 
This specific unit is equipped with i9-10980HK 3.1 GHz CPU with NVIDIA Quadro RTX 5000 Next-Q graphics card. The large amount of 64GB of RAM is going to allow you to handle large projects and the touchscreen function on the laptop is going to allow you to input with your fingertips and then be able to comment on PDF and the screenshots a lot easier. And also the screen on this machine is quite color accurate so you can trust what you see on the screen. With all the things that you need to purchase prior to the VR experience, you're gonna also need to do a couple of installations and prep of software side onto your machine. Again, how the model is acquired and made and hosted for the VR experience is all gonna be dictated by VR host software, which is Enscape in my case. And whilst Enscape is capable of doing standalone experience where you can output a single file, which can be shared and it enables VR experience as well. However, I wanted to showcase how I go about doing a design of a project into the VR experience. So I'm gonna use one of the design software and this case, it would be Revit. And again, because Enscape is capable of using SketchUp, Rhino, ArchiCAD, and Vectorworks, you're gonna be able to use all of those softwares pretty much with the identical process. Enscape offers a good amount of example project files for you to download and test out all of these process. So I will leave a link in the description for you guys to go and download those and then you can follow step by step of what I am doing here. So once the file is downloaded and ready for you, you can load this file into the Revit and then make sure the material folder is dedicated correctly. So go to file, options and rendering and then you can click on this plus button and then find the texture location so that Revit understands where you're looking for the texture from. And let's go to the 3D view. And that is what you should be able to see inside of the 3D view. And with that ready, let's move on to the headset setup. And again, depending on what VR headset that you have ended up purchasing, the process is going to be slightly different. But in my case, I'm gonna be using Oculus Quest and this is a process to get Oculus Quest set up. First, you're gonna to need to go to Oculus website and actually download the software that is meant for Oculus Quest. In my case, I am using Oculus Quest, therefore I am going to download this one. And once the download file is ready, you can double click on it to install. And then it is going to walk you through the install process. As it needs to download a couple of assets into your local machine, it may take a while, so you can pause this video until that finishes. And for those of you who are using different headsets such as Windows Mixed Reality headset or HTC Vive, there is actually install guide that Enscape has prepared for you guys so I'll also leave that link in the description for you guys to use. And once the software is installed, you're gonna have to prep the VR headset. If you just have purchased this Oculus Quest, then you are gonna have to do a bit more setup process, which is to connect to the Wi-Fi and your account with them, and then making sure everything is connected properly to your headset, as well as setting up your Guardian. Guardian is basically the play area or the boundary for your headset to register and then for you to move around. So I'm gonna have to do at least that step of setting the boundaries or the guardian, and then I'll be right back. And then by just tracking the area with the controller, I am able to set the boundary or the guardian. And then now I am able to connect the headset with my computer. And actually connecting your Oculus Quest onto your machine is called Oculus Link. And then I'm using this cable to do that. And this cable is made by Anchor and it is about 15 feet long. I'm gonna connect the USB-C port onto the headset. And the other end of the cable is USB Type-A 3.0 
piano so I can connect to the laptop and this cable should have enough of bandwidth to cover the graphic fidelity that this headset requires. Once that is done, I can wear the headset. I'm able to see the dashboard. I can go to settings and then hit the Oculus link. And then now it is going to load the Oculus app onto the laptop. And then I can go to the virtual desktop and then it is going to show you the Oculus app that is going to show up. I can go to the Revit screen as you see right here and I can go to Enscape and right here I can start the Enscape so I can jump onto the rendering screen. Wait a few moments for the rendering screen of Enscape is all loaded and once I jump into Revit I am in this 3D view. So I can actually point down at the pool area and then I should be able to jump. And I'm right here. And actually that guy is trying to jump. My right hand is going to be teleport and turn and elevate with the thumbstick. And then I can just point to the place that I want to go and then use a trigger button to teleport to those places and then I can use a side button on the menu to turn around or physically turn around as well and then here is a menu there are a couple of things that are available here I can either look at the minimap or different views that I have set up so if I want to jump back out onto that place I can click on that well I'm actually inside the tree so I can move out here or actually I can jump onto a different bedroom by clicking on this one and then now I am inside of the bedroom. Or if I choose to do so, I can go through this door and then actually be able to explore the space. Maybe walk out to this balcony here and then be able to see that view. And on the right hand with the trigger button, you can teleport and then use a thumbstick to either turn or elevate yourself up and down. And then on the left hand, you can either move with your thumbstick like this, front, back, to the sides, or you can recenter the tracking with one of the buttons or enable and disable the walk mode. So either you can fly or walk depending on how you want to travel in this model. And although you can use a thumbstick to move forward, backward, and sideways, as well as going up and down, it is not really advised to use that because it can actually make you nauseous. So my recommendation would be to use teleport as much as you can so that you don't feel as dizzy. And you've got all of these controls that are available inside of this menu. The navigation menu, you can control a couple of other things here, and then you can go to different views by using the presentation mode, and then you got minimap, and then you can actually capture a scene. So I can do a screen capture, and then point to the area that I want to capture of, and then pull the trigger. Or I can go to the next one, so I can change either to show the outlines of the model, versus changing the time of the day inside the VR headset or I can actually change the mode so that entire scene is shown as a white mode instead of all the materials being shown so that everything is sort of the clay model mode. I'm going to revert back to the non-white mode with all the materiality. And one of the things that I want to point out is the fact that with the headset, I'm still viewing the model and then actually be able to go in here, look at that specific sofa that I'm staring at, and then be able to make the changes inside the model. And once I make the change, that change is going to apply onto the VR headset that you are wearing and then that sofa is going to move. If I want to get rid of a couple of things, I can do that. And then that is going to reflect onto your VR headset as well. 
So this becomes sort of active interaction with your client, your client wearing the headset and you are able to change materiality as well as position of objects inside the model or you can change the entire massing or opening of your project. Okay, so what do you think? Thank you MSI for sponsoring this video so I can showcase how VR could be useful for architects and architect alike. As you saw, MSI mobile workstations are capable of handling all the VR workflows that you throw at it. If you're looking for a performance machine on the go, please check out the link in the description for you to get one of these for yourself as well. If you have enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe to my channel if you want to continue watching these type of videos. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I'll see you next time. Bye.